This Talent Data Mapper tutorial covers databases. You'll see how to read from, insert into, and look up from databases. Okay, we're going to start by, um, we're going to work with databases. We're going to start by importing the definitions from a database. We'll create a new database, HR1, and we'll use Oracle. fill in the instance and the credentials. Depending on which database you select, it will it will offer um, different it will offer different fields here for you to specify how to connect to the database. So we can test the connection and see that that it works. So now it's going to read the database and find the tables to import. So we'll take all of them and we'll import them into, uh, it's going to create structures, so we'll create the structures in this HR1 folder. And it's complaining that there's no primary key in this particular view, which is accurate and fine. Okay, so now we've imported, and uh, when you import tables into a database, you end up with a tables structure, we end up with table structures, and if we look at them, so we'll look at the employees structure. And what that does is that has a essentially a loop of rows. So if you're going to read from the database or write to the database, you can use this structure because it, it will get all the all the rows. If you look at the row element here, we see it inherits from this single row table structure. And if we look at that, that is just a single row without the looping element and that's used in other cases where you may want to do joins or when you want to write to multiple tables. So the first thing we'll do is uh, just look at some data within the database. So we can, if we do a show document here, uh, it will show you what it read from the database. And this is actually coming from the database. It shows the database as if it were XML. Uh, that's the way we happen to render it. I mean, it'd be nice if we had a more database-like display here, but not yet. And notice it's only showing the first um, 10,000 characters. In addition, if we if we look at our preferences, uh, you can specify how much, how many rows to read uh, from the database, how many characters to read, and, and so forth. So this way you can actually work with large databases and only get a small number of rows when you're when you're working with testing. So now what we'll do is, is uh, create a map uh, mapping the database to XML which which will be just creating a, a very trivial map to do that. So we'll have a map, a standard map And for the input, we will select this employee structure we're working with. And we'll actually select that for the output as well. And we'll map from the input to the output. So we want to get XML. And we notice that the output representation is database. So to do that, we'll look at the map properties. So this is Oracle to HR to XML. We'll right click on the map and look at the properties and we'll change the output representation to be XML. So the database structures when they're imported they are given both a database and an XML representation for convenience. So now if we run the map it will simply show us XML uh, of, of each of the records here. Also notice that when you run the map um, it shows the mapper problems view but there really aren't any problems it always gives this executing map and if that's the only thing that happens when you run the map it doesn't show the view but since we're working with a database what it's what it will also tell you is any of the rows that are read and written so any database activity will will appear in the execution status of the map so here we're saying we're reading we've read 100 rows and that the total number of rows has been limited by our preference of, of only reading 100 rows so this is helps you when you're trying to figure out why you didn't get all the data you wanted uh, when you were testing in the designer. So the next thing we're going to show is mapping uh, to database uh, output. So um, 
I've actually created this map already um, and let me close these here because it it took a bit to create it so I called it 2db and what this map does is it maps this uh, CSV file into the employees uh, record here so if we if we do a show document we can see this is a four record CSV file um, now let me uh, change some things in this map to sort of show you how it how it uh, works a little bit. So first of all, let me show you how it works. The employee ID um, is a primary key, so we have to make this up. And in this case, what we're doing is adding the value of 10,000 to the index of the loop of the of the output. So the first record will be 10,001 and so forth. Um, the row element here in the IO database tab gets a database insert function. So that's saying that we want to insert into a particular table at this point. This IO database function tab is available only, I've double clicked on this to show the properties, only when you're inheriting from something. So here we're, we're inheriting from the employee's single table row and uh, single row table. So we, we can use this IO database function here and if you double click on this to get the properties you can see okay here's the table that specify that we import into and if we click here this is the way to navigate through the tables that we want to insert into we're, we're actually going to do it from the form from the database I imported previously called HR so we're saying we want to insert into that table and I'm going to um, and here it's just we map the first name. There's nothing special about that. I'm going to remove that mapping though just to show you something. So now if I test run this map, it's going to just run, it's, it's going to show me the output um, as XML or as database. Whenever you test run a map that uses IO operations either to write to a file or to a database, it will um, by default, the, the normal test run of the map is going to sort of ignore all those I.O. And, and operations and write everything to a single um, output to be displayed, which would be XML or database or however you, however you were displaying it at the top level. That's because generally what you want to do is get the mapping right before you actually start writing files or putting stuff in database. So once you got all the mapping right and, and, and do that, then what you can do is test run to the database. So here we say test run to database. So now it's actually trying to insert this into the database and it's and it's giving us some errors. Um, so it's giving us some errors on that this unique constraint on the email has been violated. And it's also um, should have been giving errors about a missing first name here. Um, I'm not sure why that's not happening. Um, if I remove the, oh, maybe it does, maybe the first name wasn't optional. Let me remove the mappings and the last name. And now, run to the database. Yeah, here we go. So here, um, we see that that the last name it cannot be null, and um, so it's giving errors there. So these are errors that are coming from Oracle. Uh, through Hibernate actually and you can see that it gives pretty clear error reports to tell you uh, what happened and where it was that it, that it happened there's also some warnings here that it's truncating the higher date uh, because I'm using the, the get uh, for the higher date I'm using the um, just the get current date time and it only wants a date so it's giving us a warning that we've truncated the time portion of it which I can get rid of by using an, an, an extract function but I'm not going to bother with that. So let's go ahead and do the do the mappings properly. So we map the first name, we'll map the last name. And, um, and if we if we look in the um, using DB Visualizer here and um, I'll reload and Okay, so it did add these elements here, even though there were problems. So I will delete them. And 
and show that they're not that they're, that they're not there. And we'll go ahead and run the map again. And it's um, it's complaining about these unique constraints on the emails, but that seems to be working in terms of it going ahead and adding the elements. So if I reload here, we'll see that the three records have been added. So we've shown mapping input, we've shown uh, mapping output. I'm also going to show the database lookup function. So let me delete these records again. I've created a different map here. I've actually modified this map, uh, the standard example map. And I have added a validation function to the first name of this map. So this validation function uses a conditional validation report. So the, the way the validation works is, is there's a validate tab which is executed on the input side of the map. If the value of whatever expression in the validate tab is, is true, then everything's okay. If it's false, then it will have a validation error. Now, you can use a conditional validation report function to provide some additional information about the error. So if I look at the properties, we can provide a message, we can provide a number, an error severity, and so forth. Um, it has then a condition, which is the condition to check the validation condition to check, and you can also provide additional data if you want. So if we wanted to have uh, to show, for example, the last name and the street address in the in the event that we had an error. So this condition is using the has value function, which simply checks if if there's a value or not, if it's empty or not, and uh, and then we're using the database lookup function. So the database lookup function will return a single uh, value based on a condition. If we double click here to see the properties, we see the output column is this value and there's also caching. So you can, you can, um, what it will do is it will cache these values in memory for performance reasons. Um, and so the condition is essentially your where clause that you would use and, but you express that using the normal, uh, data mapper functions and we translate that into a where clause. So in this case we want the first name, the first value to be the first name from the input here and the second value to be the database column. So we use the database column function corresponding to the first name. So if we run this map it will work in, in the sense of producing output but we're getting uh, we'll get these errors. So uh, we're saying we got this validation report, which th for the reason missing first name, that was the text in the validation report. And you remember I added the street address and last name to the data and it's telling us what element and where in the data. So it, we're, we're getting a validation error for each name being, each name missing. So now if I, if I put the names into the database, so I'll run this to the database so now they should be there and if I run this map again it runs and it runs clean and we can look in the database as we did before and we will see that um, we'll see that the, that the names have in fact been added oh yeah they got added up here they're, they're shown up here at the top so uh, now we've covered reading and writing the databases and I'm going to uh, cover one further part which is how to handle database joins. So if you want to uh, uh, read from uh, multiple tables at once. So let's create a, um, uh, the, the way we do that is we create a database join structure. So um, I have created one before, which I'm going to, uh, oh, it's another table. I'll just create one now. So we just say new structure and create a database join table structure. So here it's going to uh, say, which, ta which structure do we want to select from? So let's assume we want to join departments to employees. So we'll select from departments 
and we want to specify the new structure name. So we'll say department employees and it's going to put that in the join tables folder. And now we want to use a single row table which is the target of the joins. So we want to join departments to employees so we'll say employees and we say finish. And so it's created this structure but it's advising us we need to do a little bit more work here. So we have to specify the columns on which we're going to join in the database join function and if this is a one-to-many join we need to make the database join the element having the database join function loop which is, this is a one-to-many because it's one department multiple employees. Okay so we'll thank, thank it for that advice. Here's the database join function and this is the element. So we want to join department ID and the parent with department ID and the child and then it is a one-to-many so we want to make this element loop. We'll just specify it minus one for maximum occurs. So now if we run, if we do a show document here, we can see there's the department and then under each department are the employees. Uh, so for each department you see all the employees there. And so we've created this database join structure which can now be used in a map. Um, finally, on the input side, on the uh, if you want to control the selection, then you can use a database select function as an IO function on the root of your uh, of your uh, database table and then you specify in the database select function the where clause without the word where uh, any condition you want and you can also use variables in here um, which can be passed in through system properties so that way you can control the database selection from the external environment. So we've shown how to import databases and um, map input, map output, join tables, and do database lookups.